This week on Wisconsin Foodie. Gretchen Mead of the Victory Garden Initiative. Our mission is to build communities who grow their own food. We are going to put in the rest of the 500 gardens that is part of the Great Milwaukee Victory Garden Woods. That's delicious. Isn't it good? If all radishes taste like this, I would actually eat Cheers. more radishes. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to blitz? I was born ready to blitz. Let me see. What? We have the tools. Should we go? We have the talent to blitz. What do you think of garden, sweetie? Um, today, we are having our first community farm raiser that we've ever had here, and it's a fundraiser. This is overwhelmingly terrific. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Many yeah. good things have happened this year. All right, let's have a party. Okay. Yeah. Let's dance. Raid some farms. Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters for their support. Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin. Society Insurance, small details, big difference. Outpost Natural Foods Co-op. Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Illing Company, creating packaging solutions for you. Fab Wisconsin, the regional food and beverage industry cluster. The Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin are proud to support Wisconsin Foodie, helping viewers celebrate our state's vibrant food culture. With nearly 11,000 family dairy farms, the Wisconsin dairy industry generates more than $26 billion annually for the Wisconsin economy and brings recognition to the state for producing award-winning cheeses. I've had Society Insurance for my restaurant from the beginning because I know they understand my business and how it's evolving and how the industry is evolving. You're going to have the coverage and the support you need for your unique operation. The Milwaukee region has the highest concentration of jobs in food, beverage, and ingredients manufacturing in the nation. From production to processing right down to our plates, our regional food industry offers career opportunities to fulfill your dreams and feed the world. Just over my shoulder is dynamic evidence of where your food comes from. It's the Concordia Gardens, which is part of the Victory Garden Initiative. In 2008, Gretchen Mead and a few other people just had to change the paradigm about how we think about our food and how we access it. And every May, just as the summer growing season begins, they do something called the Victory Garden Initiative Blitz. Staff members and volunteers build garden boxes, raised beds, four by eight, that are full of lush, incredible soil and they deliver them and create them all over the city. When they first began, they built 35. This year, six years later, they're scheduled to do more than 543 in the city. It's a different way of thinking about food. It's access right there, it's the Victory Garden Initiative, and it's the Blitz. Gretchen Mead of the Victory Garden Initiative. I found you in a garden, how weird. That's so strange, <laughs> I never do this. What's the, name, what's the name of this garden? This is... It's a uh, big one. Yeah, it's Concordia Gardens. It's a wonderful place located in the Harambe neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So the land stretches to that tree row right behind us. Uh -huh. And eventually we'll have a hoop house back here, a high tunnel for a seasonal production sure. year round. Sure, grow in the cold. Mm -hmm. And yeah. all of this will be farm. Um, and I'm actually quite proud of my rubble pile. And is this black gold? That's black gold. Yeah. Yep. That is uh, half compost and half topsoil. And it will be spread all down this way and, and we'll hopefully by the end of the season have this in full production. So even an idiot like me could grow things in that? Oh yeah. <laughs> 
you didn't, we could turn you, you upside have, down and stick your you head in there. You didn't have to agree with And you such. would grow heads on each of your feet. <laughs> tomatoes? Yep, lots of tomatoes. We have rows and rows of tomatoes, which is really exciting. You're going to need Everybody some loves. cages for those. Yeah, we are. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> will you come back and help us with that? I will. I will. I'll stake down. We don't know what we're doing. Sure, I restrain a tomato plant better than anybody. Really? Yeah. Now this is a good sign right here. Oh, a, a, little ladybug. a real legitimate ladybug. Yeah, that's a good sign. That's a good garden. That's a healthy garden. Beautiful. Yeah, these are the superheroes of the garden. They're like, uh, they, they, you know, they keep all evildoers out. They do. Yeah. They eat aphids. Yeah. Tell me what's a Victory Garden Blitz. What's your elevator speech? If I knew nothing about a Victory Garden Blitz. Well, our mission is to build communities who grow their own food. We organize all the volunteers, all the resources needed, the space, the trucks, the people, the people who want gardens, and all the coordination of this whole thing to install as many gardens as we possibly can. And does a garden look like this? No, it's a four by eight foot raised bed. Okay. It will fit perfectly in almost every small urban space. So when you've got that little plot of the side yard mm -hmm. that is doing nothing except Providing a lovely little turf to walk across barefoot. Right. No question. Grow food. Grow food. Mm -hmm. Fill it with a four by eight, amazing black gold, mm -hmm. and then plant your own vegetables, mm -hmm. feed yourself. Mm -hmm. And the Victory Gardens are something that this country did, right? Right. <laughs> that was a great segue, Kyle. <laughs> uh, during World War I and especially World War II, people recognized the value in growing their own food. And uh, it was the time of the greatest sort of community engagement ever in recorded, all of American recorded history, some say. And they thought if they grew their own food, they believed, rightly so, I would say, if they grew their own food, they could support the war effort. So millions of people took to that. And at some, at the peak of the Victory Red Movement, they estimate of around 40% of all produce that was eaten in urban areas was grown in urban areas. Isn't that profound? That's unbelievable. Imagine if those Victory Gardens post-war had not dropped off. Mm -hmm. If Park Space was still committed to it, if people still had right. to have gardens mm -hmm. on their house, and if they still had to get there, we wouldn't be talking. Right. But I think there'd be, in short, maybe a heck of a lot less junk food. Right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should we get a radish and eat it? Yes. That's right. There's, there's one sticking right out. This one right here? Okay. Okay. Can I yeah. get it for you? I'll yes, it. please. No, can you I spit don't... on it to clean it for you? If you, whatever you feel is best. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. I would have done that with my Giselle if she'd asked. That's delicious. Isn't it good? If all radishes taste like this, I would actually eat Cheers. more radishes. Mm -hmm. As charming as you are, I know you didn't bring me to a garden just to walk around. You're going to put me to work. Right. I like to do stuff. What are we doing? We are going to put in the rest of the 500 gardens that is part of the Great Milwaukee Victory Garden Blitz. Today, 500 gardens? Well, no, we've been doing it for two weeks now. You're, All right. you're in the final day of the Blitz. I'm the z of the Blitz. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yes. right. Take me to your wheelbarrow. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Okay. Are you ready to blitz? I'm ready to blitz. Okay. Are you ready to blitz? I was born ready to blitz. Let me see. What? What's, not, what's I mean, the... I don't know if you know, but it takes a, a blitz bicep to yeah, blitz. Yeah, I'm have aware. A lot of I've read the do. literature. Do you know how many pounds of soil we're going to shovel today? 300,000? Not that much. But just the two of us, maybe 10,000. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, each, yeah. By the yeah. end of the day, that could happen. That's a lot of veggies. Mm -hmm. How many, since you started six years ago, how many gardens have you built? By the end of today, we'll be close to 2,000 gardens. That's profound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of gardens. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of good greens. Mm -hmm. All right, I hear this big truck. A lot we of dirt, go. Yeah, shovels. Stuff, Let's, get, we get, yeah. Let's get working. Yeah, all okay. right. I think I could even do this one myself. Woo! We have the tools. Should we go? We have the talent to blitz. We have yes. Yeah, let's what build. He said. Let's build gardens. Bye, mom. Ooh, beautiful. Cardboard down. Nice. Love it. 
Wow. Look at that technique. Wow, that's hard. You've blitzed Very. before. <laughs> All this beautiful soil. Great topsoil and organic compost from uh, purple cow compost mixed together. These veggies are going to grow. Cucumbers. Cucumbers. Uh, how much will this uh, settle? Uh, we're going to rake it out, and we, the goal is to get it to about the top of the um, top of the box. Okay. But that's about it. Okay, great. Yeah, great. water it when it needs water. You You're, can't you can't water veggies too much. You're in charge of watering, okay? Every day, that's Hayden. Be your job. Every day. Every day, you have to After take care school. of the veggies. Got it, and pull weeds. Yeah. This is the best weed Mom puller has, we got. Mom, you have to help me. Yep. Even so, though she doesn't want to, she still has <laughs> to. So why'd you get a Victory Garden? I know my daughter wanted one, and I was uh, surfing the internet, and I saw you guys. And I'm like, that's great. It's, it's a great learning experience for my granddaughter, and uh, you know, keeps her out of trouble, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, fresh vegetables are good for you, right? All right, I'm gonna rake. All right, rake away. I will not. <laughs> what do you think? Where's a good spot so everybody can see it? Nice bush. Let me give you a hand. Ready? One, two, three. Way to go. last year. So these are mustard green yep. plants? They could be radishes that are going to seed. Okay. Did you plant radishes last year? No. This is, mm -hmm. this is, my father started this garden years ago. Uh -huh. And we're just trying to, con to keep it going because he passed. So when he, he did it, I have no idea. Well, I have. It's your dad's um, gardening spirit right here. It is. I'm like, oh really? Well, we'll go about that. <laughs> you know what this is, right? No. Is it chives? I was going to dig those up too. We'll dig them up and then we'll plant them right in your garden after we build it. Beautiful. All right, should we oh. go get the lumber? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go get the okay. other lumber. I'm giving you a long one. All right. You ready, Freddie? I got it. You dump it, I'll move it. Okay, good man. What's your name? Steve. Steve, Yo. Kyle, nice to meet you. Huh? Kyle. Kyle, nice to meet you. Please, Kyle. nice to meet you. This is from a woman with a bad back in here gardening. Nice. <laughs> now give it a little, give it a little rain, a little water, and you're good to go. All right, All let's right. go build another garden. Woo. You brought a parrot? What's her name? Her name is Sweetie. Hi, Sweetie. She's 23 years old. Oh, you're yeah. old enough to drink. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Like I said, she was a rescue bird. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Hi. What do you think of garden, sweetie? That's some sturdy soil. All right, sure go grow something. Woo! conclusion of a great growing season. Over my shoulder they're having something called a farm raiser, a terrific celebratory event basically for the community, for the neighborhood, for anyone that loves this new form of agriculture. More than that though, it's a celebration. Let's go see all this abundance coming out of the ground. Um, today we are having our first community farm raiser that we've ever had here and it's a fundraiser to uh, expand and grow this project. Um, we're hoping to raise about, you know, $5,000. It's a pretty easy target. We'll have some sack races. We will have food that many of the community members that live right around here donated. Um, we'll have a game in which um, you answer a question about the food system. And if you get it right, you get to throw a balloon filled with paint on our shipping container. And together, the game will make a beautiful piece of community art that we will put our logo on and um, we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna listen to rap music and reggae music and we're gonna dance and we're gonna bring people into this project and get them very excited about the vision of the future, which is right here. Who wants to help her unload? Can I get three people? Yeah, you three, thank you, okay. <laughs> Welcome back to Concordia Gardens. Look at how lush and fantastic. I, I was not uh, expecting anything less, but still, this is overwhelmingly terrific. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. I guess I want to say the Victory Garden Initiative and the people right around this property have doubled down. You know, they've doubled down their energy and enthusiasm for the project. And one way that we're doing that is we're about to purchase a foreclosed home that's adjacent to this property that we're going to rehab and turn it into our offices and some living quarters for the people who will grow food here. That we're is very amazing. excited. You know, if you can kind of think of the vision of what I want to call an agrihood, that's what we're going for here. Um, we're looking for neighbors to decide to move right next to this property because they want to become part of an agriculture project in their neighborhood. Um, so we're looking for diverse people, you know, people of all economic statuses, all ethnicities, all ages, to come here and invest in this project as part of the way that they live. Because only one type of person needs healthy food, right? No, because everybody <laughs> needs healthy food. The most exciting thing that has happened this year is that we have engaged a bunch of the kids that just live around here and they kind of run around in this space anyway. And we're working with them on a regular basis to grow the food and they're selling it at our farm stand at the front of the garden Come and on. earning money. How cool is they that? They are so excited about it, I can't even tell you. So they wake up in the neighborhood, they're gonna play here anyway. Now right. they just pick a little bit of it yeah. and boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Walking up the garden path to come and meet you here mm -hmm. in the actual garden, I was overwhelmed in a good way with all this youthful exuberance, mm -hmm. and most of it was coming from people that were about this high. Yes, that's what I'm and saying. It was it's fantastic. Amazing. It was absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic. These are the farmers of the next generation, right yeah. here. Well, I like eating what they tell me to eat. That's edible. Broccoli. Like, we're asking everybody in the garden, Concordia Garden, 
do they want to buy some honey first they can ta taste what is it and then if they want to buy some they can this is pretty good come on it's a wasp on you mm. <laughs> well i'd love to introduce you to our farmer and cook could i do that uh, uh, double duty yeah anybody that can handle both of those both things hello farmer and cook hello Pleasure to meet you, Kyle, Cherick. Colin Bowser, pleased to meet you. Nice pleased to, to meet you. So you're, you're the maestro of all this abundance. Yeah, um, this is my first year in urban gardening. I spent the last about 10 years out in Vernon County. It's kind of a different metric being here in the city. Mm -hmm. um, we have an open garden here. It's a open food pantry kind of thing. And uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a different story. You know, working on a 14 acre farm and establishing permaculture perennial crops takes a couple years longer. Here we're going to be able to dial this in within a year or so and then just wait for the cool. exponential returns from our perennial crops. So you cultivate and then boom. So you're key in the American farming story and, and dudes like you, your age, because the average age of an American farmer is in his 60s. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you you look good if you are in your 60s, well preserved, <laughs> but I think you're a lot younger. And if you don't do it and start doing it in urban settings like this, then where will our food come from? Well, and I think that that's... What I'm going for and what VGI is going for is to develop these uh, productive models that can be replicated uh, specific to the sites and whatnot. So is it fair to say that this, through your vision and your work and your work, is just one big rad incubator that you want to have rolled out across urban spaces all over America? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'd like to see 20 of these in Milwaukee in mm -hmm. the next five years. I mean, why not? Yeah. No. So today this garden, tomorrow, the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look right? Out. Right? Yeah. Yes. Pleasure to meet you, farmer you, and cook. Thank you. Cullen. Thanks. Yeah. I live two blocks from here, and I've been on that block for five years. And within that five years, I uh, had a lot of stuff go down happen. Last year, I came into the garden like all the time. I had two beds. It was amazing because it's very uh, empowering. And many times when I'm at my worst, I come down here and cry. So I usually end up down here sitting, working through a lot of stuff. What really makes sense is, is to do this around every boarded up house. I mean, honestly, put me and women like me in the house and, 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 and have people come raise the farm next to the house and then have us take care of the community. You know what I mean? Feed the community, teach them, you know, yeah. I think it really makes a whole lot of sense. I'll take on... I'll take a few hundred of those properties. Why not? <laughs> so these raised beds at the front of the garden are the best billboard I can think of to say to the neighborhood, food is grown here and it's for you. Absolutely. In fact, we have people coming through every day, all season long, harvesting food. It's really fabulous. Yeah, just drive by and there's abundance. That's good for you. Yep. Yeah. So you've got, look at these beans. Aren't they beautiful? Those are, what are they called? Black beauties or something? They might be They're incredible. something. But Can I snap one off? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at that amazing okay. color. Beautiful. I feel 50 times more mighty eating these beans. I think you just got younger. Clearly. Truly, this is really great. This is funny. This is exactly the kind of ingredients the chefs go nuts over. Mm -hmm. And yet you, with the Victory Garden Initiative, are saying, Grow it in your front yard. Absolutely. Grow it in abandoned lots. It's for everybody. It's food for everyone. And this food is for this community. The goal of this project is to keep this food here. All right, let's have a party. Okay. Yeah. Let's dance. Raid some farms. Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters for their support. Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin. Society Insurance. Small details, big difference. Outpost Natural Foods Co-op. Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Illing Company. Creating packaging solutions for you. Fab Wisconsin. The regional food and beverage industry cluster. 
the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. WMSE 91.7 FM, Frontier Radio. The Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the dairy farm families of Wisconsin are proud to support Wisconsin Foodie, helping viewers celebrate our state's vibrant food culture. With nearly 11,000 family dairy farms, the Wisconsin dairy industry generates more than $26 billion annually for the Wisconsin economy and brings recognition to the state for producing award-winning cheeses. I've had Society Insurance for my restaurant from the beginning because I know they understand my business and how it's evolving and how the industry is evolving. You're going to have the coverage and the support you need for your unique operation. The Milwaukee region has the highest concentration of jobs in food, beverage, and ingredients manufacturing in the nation. From production to processing right down to our plates, our regional food industry offers career opportunities to fulfill your dreams and feed the world. <laughs> I feel like a rabbit. <laughs> Your role as a whole is to direct people to that tent or lure them with booze. No, just kidding. But it is, <laughs> the fundraising is next to the alcohol. Just dance. I got no leverage with the seatbelt right now. I'm literally stuck. So anytime I'm out in the community, I try to make a note of that, so we can, oh, oh no, we're getting pulled over. <laughs> this is not good. 